While searching for the next video idea, I came across this amazing website on Godly. I was instantly drawn to this interactive calendar concept. It's cool, practical and versatile, perfect to use as a mini portfolio or something. I thought it would be an exciting project to recreate because it's a bit different from my usual animation focused videos. Initially, it seemed simple, but as I started rebuilding it, I realized it was quite challenging. However, I managed to pull it off using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript with a little help from GSAP. In today's video, we'll create this interactive card animation that displays data based on an array of objects for each month. If you take a closer look, you will see it's linked to the array. It checks the number of objects in the array for each month and randomly picks that same number of paths to show each story. We'll dynamically generate these cards and paths all using JavaScript. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to access the source code, you can check out the Pro Membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's dive into the code. Let's begin by setting up our container. The only static component we need here is the navbar since we'll generate the cards dynamically using JavaScript. We'll divide the navbar into two parts, the logo and the links. I'll add a few anchor elements inside both sections. And that's all we need. Next, we'll add some styles for the navbar and the cards we'll render later. Let's start by resetting the default margins, paddings and setting the box sizing to border box for all elements. We'll set the width and height of the HTML and body elements to 100% and 150% respectively. We are going to use a Google font for this project and the background color will be a dark shade. Next, we'll style the container to take up the full width and height of the page. Images will cover the container completely with the object fit property set to cover. For the navbar, we'll set its width to 30% and center it horizontally with auto margins. We'll add padding, display it as a flex container, and space its items evenly. The nav items will be displayed as flex with a gap between them. Navbar links will have no text decoration and white color. Now let's style the card component. We'll set its position, dimensions, margin, padding, and background color. We'll also add border radius, flex display, and overflow properties. The card title will have white text color and padding at the bottom. Rows inside the card will be displayed as flex with a gap. Each pad will be positioned relative with set dimensions, border radius, background color and Z index. They will have pointer events disabled by default. We'll enable the pointer events for active pads making them clickable. To create a faded effect, we'll reduce the opacity for specific pads within a certain row. The card content will be positioned absolute, covering the entire card. It will have padding, white text color and overflow Y set to auto, just so we can scroll through that container. We'll also disable pointer events by default and set Z index to 2. Buttons will have no border, outline and a border radius. They will use the same font have some padding, a white background color, and a cursor pointer. The image container inside the card will have set dimensions, margin, border radius, and overflow properties. For the copy section, we'll set margins, padding, border radius, background color, and text color. We'll style the headings and paragraphs inside the copy section with specific font sizes, weights and line heights. For the copy link section, we'll display it as flex, aligning and spacing items appropriately. Make sure you make card item have relative position as we'll be playing around with their position while animating them. 
finally, we'll add responsive styles for mobile screens. We'll adjust the width and padding of the navbar as well as the dimensions and gaps for the card and its elements. And that's it for the CSS. Now let's get to the JavaScript. Before we dive into JavaScript, let's take a look at where our data will come from. I would define an array of objects for each month. We'll loop through this array to generate clickable pads. If a month has 4 items, the month's card will have 4 clickable pads. For each item, I've included the image source, title, description, link label, and link source. This is just placeholder text, but you can customize it however you like. Alright, let's move on to the JavaScript. Let's start by importing our data from the data file. Next, we'll set up an event listener to execute our script once the DOM is fully loaded. We'll define an array of active colors that we'll use to style our active pads. Now let's create a shuffle array function. This function takes an array as an input and shuffles its elements to randomize their order. We use a common algorithm called Fisher Yates Shuffle. The way it works is by looping through the array from the last element to the first. For each element, we generate a random index within the array. We then swap the current element with the element at the random index. This shuffling ensures that our pads are selected randomly each time the page loads, providing a unique experience for users every time. Now let's create the generate pads function. This function will be responsible for creating the pads inside each card. First, we define the configuration for the rows. We want 4 rows with a fixed number of pads and the last row will have a random number of pads between 2 and 4. This is achieved by setting the row config array. Next, we initialize an empty array called clickable pads. This array will store the pads that can be clicked. We then loop through the rows config array. For each entry, we create a new row element and add the class row to it. Inside each row, we create the number of pad elements specified by the current entry in rows config. Each pad element is given the class pad and appended to the row. If the current row is not the first or last one, we add the pad to the clickable pads array, making it eligible for interaction. After creating all the rows and pads, we append the rows to the card element. To ensure the pads are selected randomly, we shuffle the clickable pads array using our previously defined shuffle array function. Finally, we call the setActivePads function, passing the shuffled pads, the card element, the number of active pads, and the items for the current month. Next, let's define the setActivePads function. This function is responsible for making certain pads interactive and displaying the content when clicked. We start by slicing the clickable pads array to get the number of pads specified by active pad count. For each of these pads, we add the active class and set a random background color from our active colors array. Each active pad gets an event listener for the click event. When a pad is clicked, we first reset the z-index of all pads to 0, then set the clicked pad z-index to 1 to bring it to the front. We then grab the corresponding item from the items array using the index and populate the card content with this item's details. This includes setting the image, title, description and link. To create a smooth animation, we use GSAP to scale the click pad up to 20 times its size over 0.3 seconds. Once the scaling is complete, we animate the opacity and pointer events of the card content, making it fully visible and interactive. We also animate each item within the card content with an elastic easing effect, making them appear from the bottom with a slight rotation and increasing opacity. Finally, we add a click event listener to the back button inside the card content. 
When clicked, it reverses the animations, hiding the card content and resetting the pad scale and the index. This function ensures that each interactive pad can display detailed content dynamically and return to its original state smoothly. Finally, we need to bring everything together. We start by selecting the container element from the DOM. Next, we loop through each month's data in our data set. For each month, we retrieve the name of the month and the corresponding items. We then create a new card element and add the card class to it. Inside the card, we create a card title element and set its inner HTML to display the month's name. The title is then appended to the card. We also create a card content element and then add card content class to it. Then we append it to the card. With the card structure in place, we call the generate pads function, passing the card, the number of items, and the items themselves. This function generates the clickable pads for the card. Finally, we append the completed card to the container. This loop ensures that each month's data is displayed as a separate card with the dynamically generated pads ready for interaction. And there you have it. We have successfully created an interactive calendar with dynamic cards and clickable pads using HTML. CSS and JavaScript. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.